the entrance antiphon for St. Norbert. I will look after my sheep, says the Lord, and I will appoint a shepherd to pasture them, and I, the Lord, will be their God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and brothers, good morning. Welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of the Immaculate Conception, and welcome to this live stream mass for Saturday of the ninth week of Ordinary Time. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who made the Bishop St. Norbert a servant of your church, outstanding in his prayer and pastoral zeal, grant we ask that by the help of his intercession, the flock of the faithful may always find shepherds after your own heart and be fed in the pastures of salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated as we listen to the Word of God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power, proclaim the word. Be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but following their own desires and insatiable curiosity will accumulate teachers and will stop listening to the truth and will be diverted to myths. But you be self-possessed in all circumstances, put up with hardship, Perform the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will sing of your salvation. I will will sing sing of your your salvation. salvation. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, with your glory day by day. Cast me not off in my old age, as my strength fails, forsake me not. I will sing of your salvation. But I will always hope and praise you ever more and more. My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day your salvation. I will will sing sing of your salvation. salvation. I will treat of the mighty works of the Lord. O God, will I tell your singular justice. O God, you have taught me from my youth. Until the present, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will will sing sing of your your salvation. salvation. So will I give you thanks with music on the lyre for your faithfulness, O my God. I will sing your praises with the harp, O Holy One of Israel. I will sing sing of of your your salvation. (laughs) Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, 
Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and, as a pretext, recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors in the treasury. For they have contributed from their surplus wealth, but she from her poverty has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, my sisters and brothers, once again, good morning. Our readings talk to us today about um, the fact that God is never outdone in generosity and that the reality is that we're called to give all that we have and all that we are. Now, for each one of us, that's different. Um, but what it does is it requires an inner, dis an inner dis disposition to generosity and to abandonment. We see that in Paul, we see it in the widow, and we see it in our saint today, St. Norbert. So let's take a look. We're continuing this beautiful letter of the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Paul's in prison. It's probably about 62 AD. He's in Rome. He's really trying to set Timothy up as his successor. And so he's been giving him an, alert, an enormous education. Uh, and you just have to look at the readings over the last couple of days as he's talked to him about uh, the fact that, that, he's, that he, has, he bears a lot, he endures a lot, that he has suffered, he has persevered, he's given everything that he had to, um, for the sake of the kingdom. And he's talked about the fact that he was imprisoned. He's talked about the fact that there have been attempts on his life. Uh, and so what he's telling Timothy is to be an apostle, a follower of Jesus Christ, is not easy. And he's reminding them also what was inherent in the gospel last week, which is, if they hate you, remember that they hated me first. And so now we're getting uh, to the crux of Timothy's letter. The last part of this letter is often uh, the second reading in funeral masses. It'll be the second reading at my own funeral mass, because it really talks about what the culmination is of that journey of faith that we have in our lives, regardless of how long or how short that life may be. But he's talking about the fact that he says that um, I charge you in the presence of God um, to, to proclaim the word, to be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, and encourage through patience and teaching. And that's important. And when you think of, of Paul talking about patience um, in terms of my own mental image of his bodaciousness, that's an interesting choice of words in his part. But he says, for the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but follow their own desires and insatiable curiosity, and will accumulate teachers and will stop listening to the truth and will be diverted to myths. Sounds a lot like today, doesn't it? When we talk about the splintering, the splintering of the religious community, people, it's always important that you go where you're fed. But what's interesting is that what you don't do is move away from, if you're a Christian, the doctrines and the teachings of Jesus Christ. And the problem is, as the, as the, as the, as the civil world uh, moves further and further away from the moral law, uh, that is becoming a much difficult, more difficult choice and an inconvenient choice uh, for a lot of people. And Paul, in his time, is warning of that. And 2,000 years later, that warning is just as true today. It says, be, be self-possessed in all circumstances. Put up with hardships. Perform the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. And of course, we're all, by virtue of our baptism, priest, prophet, and king. 
And so we each have a role in that evangelization um, to the world. And so, that, and then he goes on, I finished the race, I've kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award. Well, where's the generosity uh, in Paul's life from God? The generosity in Paul's life from God is that God gave him a second chance. As the lead persecutor of the early Christians, as Saul, the zealous Jew, um, he had Christians killed at his feet, and he witnessed the killing of them. But God knew that there was more. God knew that there was an inner disposition in him towards generosity and abandonment to him if he just tried and sought that. Now, it was a pretty dramatic moment when he got knocked off the horse on the road to Damascus, but the reality is that most people's conversion in their life is when something catastrophic happens or when their heart breaks. And certainly that catastrophic moment for Paul, which is comparable to what happened to Norbert, and we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, was that moment and that moment of conversion, that moment in which he really changed his inner disposition to generosity and abandonment towards God and to others to live the two greatest commandments. And so we see this, this really uh, made, made very clear and very beautiful in the, in the life of Paul. So then when we get to the gospel, um, Jesus again is, is, is talking about, in an interesting way, about wealth and about material wealth. And, you know, we have this scene where he drove uh, the, the, uh, the merchants away from the, uh, uh, the center of the temple. And, of course, at that time when he did that, that was a just anger uh, because they were blocking the way for the non-Jews to go to that part of the, cathedral, of the temple where they could, where they could pray. And, uh, and he never wanted to block the way, and it blocked the way to the Holy of Holies as well uh, for the traditional Jews. And he never wants anything to get in, in the way of access to his heavenly Father, and that includes you and me. So, um, so he's talking about um, the, the, the market prices, and he's talking about people who are two-faced. And of course, he's already called the high priests and the scribes and the Pharisees hypocrites. And so now he's talking about how they go uh, around in, in long robes and they, 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 they do functions, uh, functions for which, by the way, they get paid, and functions by which they also have a stage to show off. Um, and then he goes to the meekest of all, and he talks about the widow. And so the contrast that he draws is that is that when we are called to give, to be generous, we're called, and that whether that's our time or our talent or our treasure, okay, it's not just money. But when we are called to be generous, uh, we're called not to give from the surplus. Well, I didn't need that anyway. Uh, we're called to give from, from where it hurts from where it hurts, so that there is a trade-off in our livelihood, so that there is a trade-off in our own personal mortification, because that's the way in which we are cleansed. That's the way in which we grow in virtue. It's the way in which the rough, rough edges are knocked off of us to prepare ourselves for eternal life in heaven. So he's really saying that, that this poor widow did something that hurts. And of course, it hurt a lot in his time because um, in those days, because it was a male dominant, dominated culture, when the man in a woman's life died, whether it was her son or whether it was her husband or whatever, um, she became a ward of the community. Okay. And she had to accept the charity of others. Uh, and so um, he's already saying that here's someone, a widow, who is already a ward of the community in his giving. That's, that's true generosity, and that's incredible social justice as well. So we see, we see this, this generosity uh, in this woman who recognizes that everything that she has is a pure gift from God, and that everything she is is a gift from God, and she wants to give it back to him in generosity and thanksgiving. We see this also in the life of St. Norbert. St. Norbert lived from 11, 1080 to 1134, and uh, he was born of the noble class, um, and so he became a, ca a lay canon in the church, which meant that they, they, they did the high holy prayers in the church, um, and um, they often granted favors to people in the community, almost like feudal lords, um, but unfortunately they were doing it in the name of the church. And he got knocked off of a horse. 
um, because he was there was when he was 35 years old, um, there was a lightning struck near where he was out riding on his horse, and it threw him to the ground. He was unconscious for a, an extended period of time, and when he woke up. Um, he decided that he was being called to the religious life because he had money and wealth. He gave it all away. He walked barefoot and he begged for food. Ultimately, he became a priest. Um, he then formed monasteries. And we have those today around the world, the Norbertines. Um, there are, I think, about six uh, of their installations in the United States. And, and so they became ones who taught and who preached um, and who served the poor. But again, what, what we see in St. Norbert is this change in disposition in what turned out to be really the last 20 years of his life, 1115 to 1134. And what he saw was his true relationship with God, not his uh, beatified relationship of God in terms of his earthly um, wealth and pleasure. Uh, and he saw that that was a gift, but it was a temporary gift, and it was a gift to share with others. And, and so again, we see this model for us of someone who can grow in grace, who can grow in generosity. But most importantly, his inner disposition changed. So as we move forward in this weekend, um, this weekend of Holy Trinity Sunday, uh, this weekend of the anniversary mass at 12.30 tomorrow of Servant of God, Julia Greeley, who had an extraordinary inner disposition towards others and to the sacred heart of Jesus, uh, ironically, just as Norbert did, because one of the things he fostered in, in a great amount was devotion to the Holy Eucharist, um, is that as we move into this, the question that we need to ask ourselves is, what is our inner disposition? And regardless of what it is that we define our wealth in our life, um, how, do, how do we use it? How do we share it with others? How do we use it to grow not only in abandonment to God's will for our life, but abandonment to others in true love, where we take what we are and who we are and we give it to will the good of another. May God bless you and keep you. Please stand. Heavenly Father, we offer you all our prayers and our petitions as we pray. For our Holy Father, for the cardinals, the bishops, the priests, the deacons, the seminarians, the consecrated religious, and those contemplating a religious life, for them we pray to the Lord. For our government leaders, for civil servants, and for the military, we pray to the Lord. For our individual communities, our families, our friends, our extended families, our classrooms, our workplaces, and the communities in which we live, for all of them we pray to the Lord. For those who have asked us to pray for them, for those who have no one to pray for them, and for the poor souls in purgatory, we pray to the Lord. For we pray for the repose of the soul of uh, George Floyd, and we pray for his family who mourns his loss, and we pray for those who are affected around the world uh, in these days. For all of them, we pray to the Lord. We pray for social justice. We pray to the Lord. For refugees and for immigrants, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all of those that are embraced by Pope Francis' plenary indulgence during the pandemic, for those who have been called home because of the coronavirus, for their families who mourn their loss and may not have been able to be with their family members when they were called home, for the doctors, the nurses, the researchers, the scientists, the federal, state, and local emergency response coordinators, the caregivers, and the military, for the volunteers at the, at the shelters, for the volunteers in the soup and sandwich lines and the pantries, for those who are providing goods and services for those outreach ministries, and for those who are praying these ministries forward. For all of them, we pray to the Lord. And we remember the sick of our communities. Uh, first of all, here at the Cathedral Basilica, Nancy Clark, Bill Johns, Bufus Brown, Peter Chavez, Ellen Trujillo, Dustin Clark, Roger Amami, Father Jude Guilin Kirken, and Cheryl Ventura. And at St. Elizabeth, Nancy Fox, D. and Steve Perez, Loretta Perlo, uh, and Matthew Taylor. For all of them, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for those who have died. And we remember especially Mike Farley and Josie Ayer, 
of St. Elizabeth and Tina Martinez here of the cathedral who were called home by the coronavirus. Uh, we remember Jerry Pretty, Lou Jady, Jesse Mangers, Kara O'Connor, Joe Vitale, Deacon Anthony Dedzik, Billy Bruce, Kathleen Davis, and Bob Roach, who have also gone before us. For all of them, we pray to the Lord. And for those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we offer you all our prayers and our petitions to act upon according to your providential will. We offer all of them to you through Christ our Lord. Please be seated as we prepare our gifts and we prepare the altar. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. I pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. And I mention also that our intention for this Holy Mass is Cassandra Brown. Look with favor, O Lord, we pray, on the offerings we set upon this sacred altar on the feast day of St. Norbert, that bestowing on us your pardon, our obligations may give honor to your name, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Norbert you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Norbert and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Samuel, our Bishop, and Jorge, as assistant bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. <clears throat> Lamb of God, <clears throat> you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy 
that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. communion antiphon it was not you who chose me says the lord but i who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit fruit that will last the spiritual communion prayer of servant of god Raphael mary del Val. at thy feet O my jesus i prostrate myself and i offer thee repentance of my contrite heart which is humbled in its nothingness and in thy holy presence I adore thee in the sacrament of thy love, the ineffable Eucharist. I desire to receive thee into the poor dwelling that my heart offers thee. While awaiting for the happiness of sacramental communion, I wish to possess thee in spirit. Come to me, O my Jesus, since I, for my part, am coming to thee. May thy love embrace my whole life in life and in death. I believe in thee, I hope in thee, I love thee, amen. My sisters and brothers, for those of you that are here in the church, Holy Communion will be distributed at the, at the conclusion of Mass. Please stay in your pews, uh, and uh, John will come and bring you Holy Communion. For those of you that are part of the live stream, we invite you to come and receive Holy Communion here at the Cathedral Basilica. Uh, you may come and park in the Merry Lot, come through the Merry Garden, come into the church, and Jesus will be waiting for you. the body of Christ. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Renewed by the sacred mysteries, we humbly pray, O Lord, that following the example of St. Norbert, we may strive to process what he believed and to practice what he taught. Through Christ our Lord. Well, my sisters and brothers, just a couple of things. First of all, I want to thank all of you that are involved with our outreach ministry for our sandwich line, the soup and sandwich line to go at St. Elizabeth, our pantry here at the cathedral and our snacks on the hill. For all of you that are helping to prepare and distribute and to fund um, uh, those items in the outreach ministry, I thank you very much. I also want to thank all of you that are continuing to contribute in your offertory here at the Cathedral Basilica. Some of you can't do it at this time, and I know that, and don't worry about it. But for those of you that can, we encourage you to get your offertory envelopes to the church or to the office, um, uh, or to go online to the website of the two churches uh, to make a contribution. Uh, to date, um, during, uh, since shelter in place, the cathedral is down uh, $48,000 in revenue. St. Elizabeth is down $4,000 in revenue. And um, the cost that we've incurred in the last week uh, because of vandalism is now at $45,200. So we're barely making ends meet. 
the money that we get goes to two sources. It either goes to our outreach ministry or our online ministries, which we want to continue. And so we, want to, we appreciate your generosity. We want to remind you that you can pray your way through the day in our online ministry through um, praying the, uh, our mass that comes online on our Facebook and YouTube channel every morning, mid-morning. Uh, pray the um, uh, spiritual communion at 10, the Angelus at 12, the Divine Mercy Chaplet at 3, and the um, Immaculate Conception Novena at 6 o'clock. In addition, we have online this month the Scriptural Mysteries of the Rosary <clears throat> because May is the month of Mary and it's the month of the Rosary. So we invite, we invite you to join us for that as well. Finally, I want to invite you to join me and my parents before me in participating in the Archbishop's Catholic Appeal. It's been part of our life since it began in the late 80s. Uh, for my parents, when my dad was sick in the late 90s, they benefited from the broadcast TV mass. For myself, it helped underwrite some of my seminary education. Here at the Cathedral Basilica, we receive $300,000 a year from the ACA towards our million dollar a year deficit. And so the money that we give comes back home. But even more importantly, the money that the first million dollars that's collected this year will go to those churches in need throughout the archdiocese. There are a lot of pastors that also are just trying to make ends meet and barely making it and having trouble service, uh, serving the needs of their community. So anything that you can do to participate in that ministry will be greatly appreciated. I want to thank all of you for being with us today. I want to thank you for your love of our Blessed Mother. And I want you to think about your own life. Think of what, about the ways in which, uh, first of all, God has been outdone in generosity to you and how that has affected you and moved you and changed your inner, inner disposition so that in all that you have and all that you are, you share it with others. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.